Blessed be the name of the Lord. is tuning in today hallelujah if you're not able to tune in right now we pray that you will come back and view it amen we thank god for the viewers <laughs> hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord Come on and walk with me on this journey as we study the word of God together. Amen. Come on in. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Welcome. Welcome. I'm Pastor Charlene Neal Keith with a journey into wholeness, cathedral, worldwide ministries, where the flesh is crucified, the Holy Spirit is magnified, and God is glorified. And we give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. I thank God for being with you, back with you, been on a vacation, just like so many others. Hallelujah. And I thank God for you being on today. I believe Brother Eddie's on. I can see him, but those on the line, we just thank God for you, you and you. I am glad to be back. I tell you, I miss studying the word of God. You know, the word of God is a keeper. <laughs> and we thank God for being a keeper. He said his mercies are new every morning. And we thank God for his mercy. I tell you, um, I've run a little bit behind this morning. I guess I just felt like I was still on vacation. But you know what? I am here ready to study the word of God with you. I pray that you have your Bibles, hallelujah, and your communion cups. I send out a flyer um, letting you know that we will be taking communion today. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So I hope you have your crackers and your juice. Sister Suburban, thank you for tuning in this morning. Good to see you and hope to see you in person soon. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise because he's worthy to be praised. The Bible says that many are the affliction of the righteous. But he promised that he would deliver us out of them all. He, many are the affliction 
of the righteous. So affliction will come. He said he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So affliction will come. But he said, be of good cheer. He said he overcame and we have too. Now we're in this flesh, so we go through natural emotions and we feel that thing. And it's okay to express what you feel, but God, he doesn't want us to stay there. He wants us to trust him. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways. Lord, I acknowledge you in this situation. This situation is so, is so, is so much for me to bear. It's too much for me to bear. I acknowledge you in this. And you said, God, that if I acknowledge you, if I trust you and acknowledge you, that you will direct my path. I need your direction. It's about to take complete control of me, Father. So help me, Father, and to trust you and believe in, you know, because we go through things. You know, and uh, I, as you know, the ones that's on here that I see here, you know me. I'm a very practical uh, pastor, preacher, teacher, and I believe that it is important for us to be practical when I, in our walk with Christ. We apply the word of God, so we have to be taught how to apply it. Amen. And I do my best. I do my best now. Am I perfect? Do I dot every and cross every T? No. But God, I thank God for his mercies that's new every morning. And everything that I teach, I am the first partaker of the word. So I thank God for you. I don't take it for granted. I thank God for you being on today. And many of you have asked me, am I going to go back in the building? I want to. But, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. A journey into wholeness is not, God has called me to, to uh, up under this ministry, a journey into to be the uh, teacher, overseer. He's entrusted it in my hands, but basically it's our ministry. So we have to do it together. Amen. We have to do it together. And it takes money, lights and all that to run a building. I've been there. So it's, it's, it's not always easy, but it's possible. Amen. If God is really calling us to do it. And um, so so this is what I'm doing now. And I'm, I'm grateful to God because the word is still getting out. Amen. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Didn't have that plan to say, but let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to get in your word this morning. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, God. Lord, we thank you for another morning, waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, clothing our right mind, feeling good, having the activity of our limbs, feeling good this morning. Because every day, we don't always feel good in our bodies, but Lord, we know that you're in control of all things. So Lord, you tell us in your word to cast all our cares on you because you care for us. You said that weeping may endure for a night, but you promised that joy will come within the morning. So, Lord, we speak joy. We speak life. We speak peace in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. We come to you with a thankful heart, with praise and honor and glory, God, for another morning. Oh, God, you brought us through so many things, God, in our bodies, in our family's life. Lord, we just thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. The highest praise to the Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Get your Bibles. Let's turn to the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you time. The book of Psalms in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. The book of Psalms, chapter 51. Hallelujah. And I want you to walk with me on this journey as we study the word of God together. We know with 2 Timothy 2.15, it tells us to study, to show thyself approved, a workman needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So we thank God for being a student of his word. So we can, we can not just go to church and be led by emotions, but we be led by the Holy Spirit. Because we know that we know what the pastor, teacher, bishop, whoever is up there in the pulpit studying, we know it to be true. We know it to be right because we are student of the word of God. Even when we're not in church, we're studying, praying, seeking him. 
asking the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us where, where, where we need to be, where we need to go, what we need to do and how we need to do it. You say, well, pastor, Lord, we be in the, in his presence all the time. You know, I'd rather be in his presence. And sometimes people won't understand. But God, he understands. And no, we should have a, just have a conversation. We don't have to walk in the spirit uh, all the time. But I tell you, I thank God for saving me. And I thank God for his mercies. He said his word is new every morning. We give him glory and honor and praise. You should have Psalm 53 by now. Sister Patricia, thank you so much for tuning in this morning. You could have been somewhere else, but you tuned in. I thank God for you. And hello to you. My son told me you said hello, and I thank God for you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we thank God for Brother Eddie being here. You know, he's going through it. But you know what? That's the thing. He's going through it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue to move in a mighty way in this life, God. Cover him as only you can, Father. Give him peace in the midst of the situation. In the name of Jesus. The name that's above every name. You know every thought, every action, every everything that's in his mind and his heart, God. Oh, Father, continue to let the angels of the Lord encamp around about him. Lord, be that, let your will be done. You tell us in Isaiah 53, verse 5 and 6, that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we were healed over 2,000 years ago. And Lord, we know that scripture, the context of that scripture is spiritual healing. So if we healed in our soul, we saved on our way to heaven, we will see, hear God say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Lord, only you know the time. The doctors can say one thing, but you can say another. So let him feel the presence, your presence, like never before. As us he go to the Bashana that he did a shudder or Bashana Kata. He said that the Bashana that he did a Bashana Kata. Hata that a Bashana that he did a Bashana Kata. He did a Bashana Kata. Hata that 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 a Kata. Hata that a Bashana Kata. Hata that a Bashana Kata. Oh, I am with you, my son. Thus saith the Lord, I am with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Be still in your mind, in your soul, and know that I'm with you. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's with you. He's with you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. I hope you have the books, book of Psalms, chapter 51. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The title of my message this morning, God wants our hearts to be right with him. God wants our hearts to be right with him. The question I would like for you to ponder, ask yourself, is my heart right with God? Is my heart right with God? And as I previously stated, the scripture reference is Psalms 51. And I'm reading from the Amplified. 
But before I read, beloved, the theme of this message is David's plea for mercy, forgiveness, and cleansing. This is a psalm of David when Nathan, the prophet, came to him after he had sinned with Bathsheba. Verse 1 through 7 of Psalms reads as follows. He said, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and guilt and cleanse me from my sin. For I am co conscious of my transgressions and I acknowledge them. My sin is always before me. David said, my sin is always before me. Verse four, against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight. So it sounds like David was feeling some guilt, some shame. He knew he had done wrong before the Lord. He said, against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight so that you are justified when you speak. He said, you are justified when you speak, meaning your sentence and faultless, he said, and faultless in your judgment. Verse five, I was brought forth in a state of wickedness. He said, in sin, my mother conceived me. And from my beginning, I too was sinful. He said, in the beginning, I was born in my mother's womb in iniquity, meaning sin. Some people don't agree, but keep walking with me. Verse six, he said, behold, you desire truth in the innermost. Say, God, you de desire truth in the innermost, in my soul, in the innermost being. Uh -huh. And in the hidden part of my heart, you will make me know wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. He said, purify me. He said, purify me with heifer and I will be clean. Hallelujah. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Beloved, this psalm expresses one of the clearest examples of repentance in all scripture. David's confession has helped people examine uh, excuses, half-hearted repentance, uh -huh, and lack of sorrow over sin that can keep them from experiencing pardon. Uh -huh. That means they have not humbled themselves. David's words, beloved, also demonstrate the place of hope within confession. We should use this psalm, hallelujah, as a starting point when guilt or a feeling of distance from God is affecting our relationship with him. If you've been walking with God long enough, I know that you have probably experienced it. I see the halos over your head. You said, Pastor, since I got born again, I haven't seen where well, I pardon you. Because I have, even if it was in my thoughts, hallelujah. I've said, and I thank God for his mercy every morning. Beloved, it will help us to identify and remove sin in our lives through sincere confession and repentance. Uh-huh. David was truly sorry, beloved, for his adultery with Bathsheba and was and for murdering his husband to cover it up. If you know the story, David tried his best to get Uriah to when he come back from battle. He was King David and Uriah was out on the battlefield. Hallelujah. Serving the king and David saw his wife up there on top of the roof top bathing hallelujah and he said Lord have mercy I'm just paraphrasing I am the king I got to have that now Uriah was out there serving the king <laughs> and he looking at his wife and you know the story he knew that his actions had hurt many people after he done it. However, because David repented of those sins, 
God mercifully forgave him. My sisters and my brother, you must realize no sin is too great to be forgiven. Other than the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. So I have a question for you. Do you feel that you could never come closer to God because you have done something terrible? Mm-hmm. Well, I come by to tell you this morning, you cannot do anything that terrible other than blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Just like the Holy Spirit had me magnify, he magnified the gift that's within me to speak it in tongues. But then he allowed me to interpret it because he felt that brother's heaviness this morning. Hallelujah. God wanted him to know that he hadn't forgot about him. And he just used this available vessel. When you come against the Holy Spirit or speaking in tongues, that's the limit. Hallelujah. But there's no sin uh -huh, that God will not forgive other than blaspheming the Holy Spirit. We must be quiet when we don't understand something. Because if we believe in God, we go to our prayer closet and say, God, I don't understand that. I don't know if it's real, God, but I will not open my mouth and just humble ourselves. So I come by to tell you that God can and will forgive you of any sin if you ask him to. And then turn from it. Ask him with all your being. He knows your heart to help you in your weakness. And he will cleanse you, cleanse and purify you. My sisters and brothers, while God forgives us, he does not always erase. You say, oh, here we go, pastor. Yes, I know. I feel it too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Always erase the natural consequences of our sin. Mm -hmm. You know how some people say in the Christian, we reap what we sow. The world say it's karma. Uh-huh. Well, David's life and family were never the same because of what he had done. You say, oh, Lord. Well, if you would like to turn with me there, Second Samuel 12, verse 1 through 6 is evident of this. See, that's what I understand. I don't understand why we, as people, human beings, can put our mouth on someone else. If we get in the word of God, we'll realize that the biblical characters made mistakes too. And we'll pray for one another. And we will spend our time loving on one another. First Corinthians, uh, uh, what is it, 13 and 13. He said we can have hope. We can have faith and hope. But the greatest gift is love. Demonstrating the love for one another. So I can have faith in God. I can have hope. Hallelujah. I can pray and seek him. But if I don't have love, he said it's like making a noise, a loud noise. Mm. So David's life and family were never the same of what he, because of what he done. Second Samuel 12, verse 1 through 6 is evident of this. And it reads as thus. It says, and the Lord sent Nathan, the prophet, uh -huh, to David. He came and said to him, there were two men in the city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had purchased and nourished. So he had a lamb and he, he nourished it, he purchased it and he nourished it. And it grew up together with him and his children. It ate his food, drank from his cup. It lay in his arms and was like a daughter to him. Verse 4, now a traveler, meaning a visitor, came to the rich man. And, and to avoid taking one from his own flock, listen to this. And to avoid taking one from his own flock or herd to prepare a meal for the traveler, he had come to him, who had come to him, he took the poor man's, your lamb, and prepared it for his guests. Then David's anger burned. Now this is Nathan, the prophet, telling David this, this story. He said, then David's anger burned intensely against the man, and he said to Nathan, 
See, his anger burned against him because he had nourished his, your, your land. He ate with his family. It was like their pet. You know, he loved it. And the Bible said he took it and prepared it for the guests. And, and Nathan is telling David this. And David's anger burned intensely against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. King David said he deserves to die. Uh-huh. He shall make restitution for the your lamb four times as much as the lamb was worth because he did this thing and had no compassion. Now he's talking about this man. Beloved, as a prophet, Nathan was required to confront sin, uh -huh. even the sin of a king. You know, many prophets do that today. Uh -huh. He needed great courage, skill, and tact to speak to David in a way that would make him aware of his wrong actions. Uh huh. When we might have to confront someone, sometimes it's challenging. With unpleasant news, we should pray for courage, skill, hallelujah, and tact. We need to stay before the Lord. Lord, give me the way to say this to the person. If we want the person to respond constructively, we should think through what we're going to say. Because how we present our message, hallelujah, may be as important as what we say. In other words, beloved, we should season our words with what? With wisdom. Hallelujah. We should season our words with wisdom. And what better way to season our words with wisdom is to go to the Father, who's wise, who created all things, even us. <laughs> Amen. Verse 7 through 14 of 2 Samuel 12 contains the story of how David felt the consequences of his sin. And to David's surprise, Nathan told him that he was the man. He was talking about him. And this is what it says. He said, then, then Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus said the Lord. This is what the Lord said. He said, thus said the Lord, the God of Israel. He said, I know, this is what he told him. He said, I anointed you as king over Israel. And I sp spared you from the hand of Saul. I also gave you your master's house and put your master's wives into your care. And under your protection. And I gave you the house, royal dynasty of Israel and, and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have given you much more. Verse 9. Why have you despised the word of the Lord by doing evil in his sight? Help us, Lord. You have struck down Uriah, the Hittite, with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife. You have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword should never depart from your house. Because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be your wife. Thus saith the Lord. Behold, I will stir up evil against you from your own household. And I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your companion. And he will lie with your wives in broad daylight. Oh, Jesus. Indeed, you did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and in broad daylight. Verse 13, David said to Nathan, he said, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan uh, said to David, the Lord has followed your sin to pass without further, further punishment. You shall not die. He saw how David was sorrowful. He said, I have sinned against the Lord. Nevertheless, because by this deed, you have given a great opportunity to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme him. The son that is born to you shall certainly die. Beloved, the predictions in, in these verses came to pass because David murdered Uriah and stole his wife. First, the way that these predictions came to pass, first, murder was a constant threat in David's family. Second Samuel 13, just walk with me a minute. Second Samuel 13, verse 26 through 20, 29 makes us aware of this. 
and it reads as thus. Then Absalom said, if not, then at least let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said to him, why should he go with you? But Absalom urged him again, and he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Amnon commanded his servants, no, he said, notice carefully when Amnon's heart is joyous with wine. Uh huh. And when this, when I say to you, strike Amnon, talking about murder was constantly threatening David's house after he sinned against, sinned against God. He said, Amnon's heart is joyous with wine. And when I say to you, strike Amnon, then kill him. Do not be afraid. Have I not commanded you myself in doing so? Have I not taken full responsibility for his death? Because courageous, be, he said, be courageous and brave. So the servants of Absalom did to Anan just as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons got up and every man mounted his mule and fled. Beloved, Amnon was David's eldest son. And first in line of sequence. So murder, who Jesus, was a part of his house. So it's evident that murder was a threat in David's family. Second, his household rebelled against him. Second Samuel 15 verse 13. It said, then a messenger came to David saying, the hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. So this is evident that his household rebelled against him, the king. And David, he flees. He had to flee to Jerusalem. Third, his wife was given to another in public view. Who Jesus. Second Samuel 16, verse 20 through 23. Absalom said to Ahithophel, these names are difficult to read sometimes, give us your advice. What, what should we do? Ahithophel answered, sleep with your father's concubine, whom he left to take care of the palace. Then all Israel will hear that you have made yourself obnoxious to your father. Now his own father. Uh, and the hands of everyone with you will be more resolute. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the roof. And he slept with his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Can you imagine? And my mind went back that Bathsheba was on the rooftop when he saw, when he saw her. He began to lust after her. Now in those days, the advice of Hithophil gave, the advice that he gave was like that of one who inquires of God. That was how both David and Ephraim regarded all of Hithophil's advice. And fourth, his first child by Bathsheba died. And this is found in 2 Samuel 12, verse 18. And it reads as thus. He said, then it happened on the seventh day that the child died. David's servants were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, while the child was still alive, he, we spoke to him and he would not listen to our voices. How then can we tell him the child is dead since he might harm himself or us? So, beloved, it's evident that David had to deal with the consequences of his sin. Jesus. So, I have a question for you to ask yourself. Am I currently being tempted by a moment of pleasure that I know would be a sin if I follow through with it? Mm. Am I currently being tempted by a moment of pleasure? that I know will be sin if I follow through with it. Beloved, we must pause to consider the potential devastation consequences. If David had known the painful consequences of his sin, he might not have pursued the pleasure of the moment. <laughs> My sisters and brothers, during this incident, David wrote Psalm 51 giving valuable insight into his character uh -huh, and offering hope for us as well. He's helping others not to make the same mistake that he has made. What one must realize is no matter how miserable guilt 
makes you feel or how terrible you have sinned, you can pour out your heart to who? To God. And seek his forgiveness as David did. Beloved, you may still have to experience the consequences of your actions, but God's forgiveness is always available if we confess uh -huh, our sin to him and are truly sorry for what we've done. God will restore us to a place of love and usefulness. Don't worry. Don't look. The Bible said don't look to your right. Don't look to the left, but look to the hills. Look to God for your forgiveness. And he can restore you to a place of love and youthfulness. Jeremiah 15 verse 19 puts it like this. He said, therefore, thus said the Lord to Jeremiah, if you repent, now he's a prophet. He said, if you repent and give up this mistaken attitude of despair and self-pity, then I will restore you to a state of inner peace so that you may stand before me as my obedient representative. And if you separate the precious from the worthless, examining yourself and cleansing your heart from unwarranted doubt concerning my faithfulness, uh -huh, you will become my spokesman. Let the people turn to you and learn to value my values. But you, you must not turn to them with regard for their adultery and wickedness. You say, Pastor, what is God talking about here with Jeremiah? If you allow me, I would like to give you a little bit of back, background information, hallelujah, of what's going on here. Jeremiah accused God of not helping him when he really needed it. Jeremiah, beloved, had taken his eyes off of God's purposes and was feeling sorry for himself. Ask yourself, have I ever felt sorry for myself? Go ahead and humble yourself, brother and sister. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, glory. But, hallelujah. In response, God didn't get angry at Jeremiah. He answered by rearranging Jeremiah's priorities. As God's mouthpiece, Jeremiah's role was to influence people, not let them influence him. Beloved, there are three important lessons here for all leaders in this passage. Uh -huh. Number one, in prayer, we can reveal our deepest thoughts to God. I believe this can relate to everybody, but we're talking about Jeremiah not being influenced by others because he felt that God had left him. He, he was struggling with his faith. Uh huh. So number one, in prayer, we can reveal our deepest thoughts to God. Number two, God expects us to trust him no matter what. And number three, we are here to influence others for God, not to be influenced by, by them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Furthermore, furthermore, although David's sin had been against Bathsheba and Uriah, David said that he had sinned against God. When you have a relationship with God, hallelujah, David let his flesh get in the way. And as I always say, this flesh is a mess. It wants to do what it wants to do. And Satan doesn't play fair. He's not going to give you something you don't like. He's not going to give me something I don't like. Uh-huh. You say, Pastor, you put yourself right with us. You dare go right. Because opposition come to me by being a leader and preaching. But I tell you, if we stand steadfast, unmovable in God, we can make it. Hallelujah. We say, God, stay before the Lord. So by sheep, and, and what David said, the Bible said, by sheep and Uriah, David said he had sinned against God. Although it was by sheep and Uriah. He had Uriah's husband, I mean, uh, by Sheba's husband killed Uriah that honored him. As the king, and he took his wife, slept with his wife. Lord Jesus. But he felt guilt, shame, and he said, Lord, I've sinned against you. For example, when someone steals, murders, or slanders, the act is against someone else. 
In other words, it's against the victim. Mm -hmm. According to the world standards, ex extramarital sex between two consenting adults is acceptable if nobody gets hurt, according to the world standards. But people do get hurt. In David's case, case a man was murdered and a baby died. What we must realize is that all sin hurts us and others. But ultimately, it offends God because sin in any form is rebellion against his way of living. When we are tempted to do wrong, we must remember that we will be sinning against God. Beloved, I believe that this reminder may help us to avoid disaster. If you agree with it, type amen. It will help us avoid disaster. Verse 8 through 10 David says to the Lord, he said, make me, of Psalm, uh, verse 8 through 10 of Psalms 51, he said, make me, uh, make me hear joy and gladness and be satisfied. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me, he said, create in me, Lord, create in me, create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right steadfast spirit within me. Beloved, because we are born as sinners according to Psalm 51 verse 5, which states, and I repeat, I was brought forth in a state of wickedness and sin. My mother conceived me. And from my beginning, I too was sinful. What this is saying, because, it's because we are born as sinners, we naturally want to sin. Uh-huh. Well, we, we naturally want to please ourselves rather than God. David followed that inclination when he took another man's wife. We also follow it when we sin in any way. Like David, beloved, mm, we must ask God to cleanse us from within. Clearing our hearts and spirits for new thoughts and desires. God's godly conduct can come only from a clean heart and spirit. We should ask God to create a pure heart and spirit in us. Repeat after me. God, create, hallelujah, a pure heart. Woo, God. Thank you, Jesus and spirit within me. God, create a pure heart and spirit within me. Amen. Verse 11 through 12, David continues to pray to the Father. And this is what he's saying. Says, he said, verse 11, do not cast me away from your pleasure and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Beloved, I have, a, I have some questions for you. Hallelujah. You say, Pastor, you have so many questions. Yes, I do. We have, to, we have to ponder this thing. Do you ever feel stagnant in your faith? Do you ever feel stagnant in your faith? As though you are just going through the motions. Mm. Has sin ever driven a wedge between you and God, making him seem distant? David felt this way. Mm -hmm. He felt this way. As we have been made aware, he had sinned with Bathsheba and had been had just been confronted by Nathan the prophet. Mm -hmm. And in his prayer, beloved, he cried out to the Lord, Restore me! Hallelujah, the joy of my salvation. He felt distant from God. He said, I can imagine, restore unto me, God, the joy of my salvation. And you're freeing God when you're in his will and trusting him. You're saved. But when you sin, hallelujah, you feel so far away from God. Beloved, God wants to be close to us, he, he wants to be close to us. Hallelujah. He wants us to be close to him and to experience his full and complete life. Hallelujah. 
but sin that remains unconfessed makes such intimacy impossible. But be determined to confess your sin to God. You may still have to face earthly consequences as David did, but God will return the joy of your relationship with him. I tell you, God is a good God. He is a faithful God. There is no one like him. We serve a mighty God, Prince of Peace, Abba Father. Help us, Lord, in our weakness. Verse 13 through 16 goes on to say, he said, then I would teach transgressors. This is David. He said, then I would teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted and returned to you. Rescue me from blood guiltiness. Oh God, the God of my salvation, then my tongue will sing joyfully of your righteousness and your justice. Now this man been sinned against God. He didn't, he's the king. He made, he did, God did all these great things. So how can we put our mouth on anybody? We, we should say help them God in their weakness. Lord, I come before you as it relates to my brother. Lord, I come before you as I re as it relates to my sister, because it could be me. So David is here in verse thirteen through sixteen. Then I would teach after he did fa fail God. He said, "Then I would teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted and returned to you." He said, "Rescue me from blood guiltiness, God." He was feeling that thing. Oh God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will sing joyfully of your righteousness and your justice. Oh Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice or else I would give. He said, unless I would give it. You are pleased with birth offering. What is David saying here? God, he said, David is saying God has forgiven him and he has the desire to teach other transgressions God's ways so that sinners will be converted. Beloved, when God forgives our sin and restore our relationship with him, we should want to reach out to others, hallelujah, who need this forgiveness and re reconciliation. My sisters and my brothers, the more you have felt God's forgiveness, the more you will desire to tell others about it. I come by to encourage you today, hallelujah, that God loves and forgives you. I also would like for you to encourage someone else, hallelujah. You may know that God loves, tell them that God loves them and forgives them. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Last verse 17 through 19 reads as thus. He said, my only sacrifice acceptable to God is broken, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, broken with sorrow for sin, thoroughly penitent, penitent. such, O oh God, you will not despise. By your favor, do good to Zion. May you reveal the walls of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in the sacrifices of righteousness, in burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then young bulls will be offered on your altar. Beloved, God wants a broken spirit and a contrite heart. We can never please God by outward actions, no matter how good they may be. If our inward heart and our attitude resist him, we must ask ourselves, am I sorry for my sin? Mm -hmm. And do, hallelujah. It's very important to ask ourselves, am I really sorry for my sin? And do we genu genuinely intend to stop? Brokenness here is about being open and responsive to God's correction as opposed to being hardened or resentful. We have to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. Amen. God is pleased by this kind of humble repentance. 
God is pleased by this humble repentance. I have a question for some. Are you a sinner and need a savior? Are you a sinner? We all sin and fall short, but do you need a savior? Have you ever asked him to come into your heart? Well, this morning, I want to give you the best invitation that you will ever get. Romans 10, 9 and 10. He said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. David sinned and he felt the consequences of his sin. Woo, he went through a lot, but he was grateful that God restored the joy of his salvation. Amen. Do you know him today? Do you know him? If you don't, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. After listening to this word, I confess that I believe that God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for me. But on the third day, he rose again. I confess that and I believe it with my heart by faith. See, you can't earn it. You can't do anything for it. You can't, you can't buy it. It's a gift from God. God loves you and he wants to use you for his purposes. Amen. If you received him, the angels of the Lord rejoicing in heaven. And so are we. We thank God. Welcome into the family of God. To God be the glory. Now get connected to a Bible believing teaching ministry and begin to grow in the things of God. Amen. If you've been on this journey a while and you've allowed things get to get the best of you, the pressures of life, temptation, and you've fallen, you know, you can repent today because the Lord said, he said, he wished that none should perish, that all should have eternal life. Acts 3 verse 19 said, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And he promised that a time of refreshing would come from the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent in the name of Jesus. I turn from that sin that I've allowed to take my eyes off of you, God. I've allowed this flesh to rule. Forgive me, Father. Help me in my weakness. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. In Jesus' name, I need you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome back into the family of God. Ooh, to God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I hope you have your elements this morning. I thank God for the word of God, for the people of God. Blessed be unto the mighty hand of God. He's awesome. There is no one like him. We're taking communion this morning. Hallelujah. Get your crackers. Get everything that you need and your juice. Sister Sharon, thank you so much for tuning in this morning. It's a pleasure to see you. To God be the glory. I pray that you are doing well. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord up there in Erie, Pennsylvania. I talked to my sister yesterday. Yes, I talked to her yesterday. We laughed and talked and I asked about you. I pray that you and your family are doing well. And I'm still praying, you know, and I know your mother's in, a, in heaven. Amen. God gave a lot of years and we thank God for you this morning being on. So I'm going to read, you know how I am. I like to inform us, give us knowledge while we're taking communion. Some people go through it fast. We're going to go through it. So 1 Corinthians, get your elements, your crackers and your juice. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 through 34. And I'm reading from the Amplified. Darren Smiley, thank you for tuning in. Daniel Neal, my uncle, thank you for tuning in this morning. Yes, hallelujah. Sister Suburban, Eddie Field, I thank God for each and every one and the ones that will come back. The Lord, let me explain to you what the Lord's Supper means. The Lord's Supper was understood as a memorial of Christ's sacrificial death on the basis of a tradition handed down to the Corinthians by Paul. You know, Paul, he, he, cre you know, he, he created that church. Um, 
he reminded them of its real significance based on Jesus Jesus' last supper with his disciples. And this is what he said in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 through 34. He said, for I received from the Lord himself that instruction which I passed on to you. This is Paul, the author of Corinthians. That the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my representation. This is, meaning represents, my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Just hold out. Let me finish. Verse 25. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This, is my, this, is, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you re- drink it in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord's Supper until he comes again. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him will be guilty of profaning and sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. But a person, this is the part I always like to emphasize, but a person must prayerfully examine himself and his relationship to Christ. And only when he has done so should he eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without solemn reverence, solemn reverence and heartfelt gratitude for the sacrifice of Christ, eats and drinks a judgment on himself if he does not recognize the body of Christ. That careless and unworthy participation is a reason why many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep in death. But if we evaluate it, he said they sleep in death. He said, but if we evaluate and judge ourselves honestly, recognizing our shortcomings and correcting our behavior, we will be, we will not be judged. But when we fall short and are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined by undergoing his correction so that we will not be condemned for eternal punishment along with the world. Verse 34, Jesus states, although about the remaining matters, I will take care of them when I come. Get your cup, get your cup, hallelujah. Get your elements here. I have mine here, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's break the bread and eat it together. Hallelujah. As a representation of his body, which was offered as a sacrifice for you and I. Hallelujah. This cup. Hallelujah is a new covenant rectified and established in our Lord Jesus Christ's blood. Let us do this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood Sing it with me. Of Jesus. Singing all the blood of Jesus. It makes white as snow. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. God is a good God. The blood of Jesus, when he went to the cross and died for you and I, it makes us white as snow. You know that's a miracle from God. We serve a good God, a mighty God. He gives us peace which surpasses all understanding. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I thank God for each and every one of you tuning in today. It is my prayer that you got something out of this message. I pray that you did. Thank you so much, Sister Suburban, Sister Patricia, uh, Brother Darren, hallelujah, Brother Eddie, um, all of you, the one, Brother Daniel, all of you that tuned in this morning, thank you so much. And I pray that this message was a blessing to you. I know it made us think, it made me think. 
And I thank you. I thank God. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. There is no one like him. We serve a mighty God. I want to give you some news. First of all, if you're led to give, give into this ministry and we go back in the building, I can see you personally. We can work together. Amen. You can show to our cash app, dollar sign wholeness1965, dollar sign wholeness1965. Or you can go to my website, www.ajourneyintowholeness.org, and you can click on giving if you would like to sow $2, $3, $4, whatever you decide. Amen. I give into the ministry every week. Um, just trying to, you know, build it up and because it takes money to do things. Amen. If it's meant for us to go back in. But if not, I will be right here until I, in prayer here, that God say, okay, we will not do Sundays anymore. And just Tuesday, whatever he tells me to do. Amen. I enjoy teaching. I enjoy teaching the word of God. But, you know, it takes people. It takes people. We got to help one another in the ministry because it'll be all on one person. We need to help each other. It's not just, it's not my ministry at all. It belongs to the Lord. So I thank God for each and every one of you. So if you're led to give, if you feel an unction in your spirit, you can go to dollar sign wholeness 1965 and sow your seed. To God be the glory. I'm excited. I am preparing. I'm asking the Lord to lead and guide me. I'm preparing an event. Before I had my surgery, what, two years ago, I was working on my next book, A Journey into the Matters of the Heart. Some of you have already got uh, A Journey into Wholeness, the first book. And so I'm excited. I'm going to have a book signing. I'm just trying to get it all together. And I want you to come out. It is out on... um, Amazon, but I want to see you. I don't really want you to get it off Amazon, but if you desire to, you know, fine. But I, I'm waiting on my copy so I can personally show you the book and, and I, I want to have a book signing and I want it to be really nice. And I'm going to invite everyone that has been a part of Matters of the Heart, the talk show that I used to do. I want to bring everybody back. I did a panel with all men and they spoke about abuse and they are in that book. I've done so many things. God has entrusted certain things in my life. And that's why it was so challenging for me to go through what I went through, but I'm not exempt. So here I am. I'm standing before you still teaching. Uh, but I tell you, I have to slow my road sometime because that old head want to hurt. But I thank God for being here. So stay tuned and you will um, have an update of that event coming. Uh, my girlfriend got so excited. She said, you're going to start back doing events. I didn't say that. I said, I'm going to do this book signing. <laughs> but I thank God. I thank God. I remember the event we did in Thomasville where Sister Suburban's mom came and she spoke to us about black, black, black history. And it's just been a blessing, you know, just uh, meeting so many people. I tell you, God is so good. I'm grateful to God. So I will be back here Tuesday night, ready to study the word of God. We in the book of Matthew chapter 10, I believe it is. Oh Lord, Sister Suburban used to keep up with it all the time. And I know brother Eddie does. You keep up with me. Pastor, we in chapter so-and-so. I said, okay. I always have to go back and look at my notes, but we give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Continue to pray for me and I will continue to pray for you and Please stay connected to the lifeline, which is the Holy Scripture, because the enemy, he doesn't play for play play fair. He comes intensely, you know, to take us off track. Uh, You know, we have to stay in tune with God. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to study your word with your people. Lord, help us, God, in our witness. Lead, God, and direct our path. I pray that the angels of the Lord encamp around about us, leading, guiding, protecting us in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said in your word that you will supply all our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Lord, I'm a living witness. You will take care of us. Lord, if we just cast our cares on you and trust you, Stand on your word. You say, give and it shall be given. Press down, shaking together. We're men giving to your bosom. You will not come down here, but people will start giving. We just stay faithful and trusting you. 
into our lives. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you that each and every one, I speak over their lives that they will be a walking epistle of your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, the name that's above every name, you said that every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, every chance I get, I bow my knee before you and I confess that you're Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You be blessed, my sister. Be blessed, my brother. Until Tuesday night, 7.30 p.m., we'll be ready to study the word of God with you. Have a blessed rest of the week. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord.